Hey, yo, Maggie. What? What is it? Well, actually, I should be asking you, what? what is it? Something's going on inside the head of yours. And I'm curious what it is. It's, it's nothing. It's fine. Nothing you need to worry about. Right about that. No, I'm going to need you to tell me honey bunches. And with a flash of pink in her eyes, she's going to try to get her to open up. I'm going to guess popularity? Yeah. Nine? Yeah, that, that'll do it. And for clarity, it's not like a forcible, like, cracking open the shell. It's more of a, like, what are you looking at specifically? And what is what is the train of thought that your brain mind has right now? I don't need, like, your deepest, darkest fears or anything like that. She's She's actually not digging deep. She's just like, tell me what is the problem right now? She's not about to fall apart, but she is kind of shaky. She's like, Head Mr. Sanity, she's she's known this whole time, and I think she's been lying to us about things with Eliana and she's been lying to me and or she just hasn't told me that she she knows who I am and she never told me. How could you not tell someone that? How could she just like let me come here knowing that now she wants to talk to me no more and she can like kick me out because she didn't realize what was going on and she's she's freaking out. Sarah is actually going to interrupt her right before she finishes that last sentence, like putting a, a, a hand on her face and say, because you are who you are right now. Your names, your ancestry don't, don't really matter. What the decisions that you make are, that's the important thing. Your name certainly has no link to what decisions you make as you continue on. Goodness knows my name has nothing to do with what it is linked to. She starts to relax a bit at this point. You notice your phone has been buzzing a lot with messages from people. Oh, shit. <laughs> I have a fast uh, noti- uh, full notification read system on my phone, on my book, so I flip the book open to the fast notifications, and I'm like, alright, hit me with everything. There's a witch hunter coming. Yeah. That's... And he is heading hmm. straight for the archives, and the last message you got was, he's at the door. She's gonna say it out loud. Oi, Dorian, Heinz, Sigmund, Linus, Aeol- Aeolos. I don't know why I picked a Greek name. <laughs> Check the door. Check the door and keep it closed. We have company. What kind of company? Ooh. And I'm going to flip my book open to a page that I very often it open it to, which is just a map of the region with a single red dot on it. Where is that little red dot? What does the red dot signify? The red dot is somebody who I always keep my eyes on. And it's not somebody, it's something. It's not nearby. Hmm. That's a shame. Oh, well. It's probably around the outside of the school. What's wrong, Tara? We have visitors. Specifically one. What kind of visitor? The kind of visitor that we don't need anywhere near this building. Can I hear it in Tara's head? Yeah. Oh, she is oh. not quiet. She has she has been filling it. She's basically been reciting to you everything that she's reading. So you can react faster if you want. Uh, that's, no, that's, that's bad. I feel like that's bad. That's really bad. That's really bad. What is it? Wh- wh- which hun- which hunter? Okay. You know the name? Witch hunters specifically? Not like all witches. They are specifically looking for people who are practicing illegal forms of dark magic since there are some things that can be practiced with some control. But while that conversation is happening, Tara, you get some response backs and they're all very apologetic. <sighs> then get out of my sight, all of you. <sighs> oh no. As in, they've been locked out of the archives by the time you sent them that. Oh, we have five that are inside of the archive. Those are the ones who I told to keep the door closed. They were locked outside of the archives. So they were kicked out? Yes. 5v1? Not a chance. I flip back over to the map and I walk knowingly along the shelf, which is worrying because this is the forbidden section. You're not supposed to really know what's in here. And I go to one specific book, flip it down, open it. And then I'm going to start casting to call in Becca. Are you calling in the red dot? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah! I might not be able to get into a 1v1 fight with a witch hunter, but I am sure that something less friendly might be able to. We'll see if it arrives. Also, for context, a person of relative authority came in and told them that they needed to leave. So they, it's, you're not exactly sure what happened, but it's not like a, they were going against what you asked them to do, you're by friends. But it's just, there was someone who said, you need to leave, it's potentially dangerous in there, and they, they didn't realize that that person could possibly be a threat to you guys. It's like, oh, this person just hunts bad people. It should be fine. Are we still invisible? That is a good question. I'll say it's probably been about 30 minutes. Sorry, it missed and then it went off the table. I was rolling a d6 to see how the invisibility potion probably lasts about 40 minutes because I just rolled a d6 and times 10. You got a little bit of invisibility left. Those of you that actually drank it, because two of you did not, and one of you is... Well, after you delivered the tea, what did you do? Did you go back to just, like, finding ways to steal all of the coffee and the tea? Oh, no. No, I'm good. I'm now there. And now there's talks of a fight, like, oh, Grania's ready for a fight. Actually, the the command that she's gonna she's gonna give to her hive mind is going to be not leave, but open these doors. She's naming off a series of doors and windows that her hive mind are in charge of opening. Tara scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Serana would like to look at the books just to see like what kind of books there are around us and what kind of wards there are and such. Roll for knowledge. Would that be plus one since it's books? Yeah. Also, you're a yeah. little bit closer to personal records, so there might not be a lot of specifically magical books, but I will allow the one Tara used. Okay, then that's uh, six. Are you looking for anything in particular, or...? Something that could be used as sort of a way out. Hmm. Or like a distraction. Ooh, you could find the records for the blueprints of the building and see if there's a secret way out of the, build- out of the uh, archive. Yeah, that could work. Yeah. That would be next to records. Most of the warts are more protective. You can't see any straightforward ways out of there. There are some where when interacting with certain things, they might like set off like noise or like light reactions that could cause like a visible or like auditory distraction. Check something on fire, that one. It'll make a lot of noise. It'll deflect the flames and that would be distracting. Terra your hive mind that are outside of the door are just like looks younger, doesn't look all that powerful it seemed very focused though seemed weird, not super well armed, but he did have like some kind of restraints I don't want to know who he's looking for, but they just get the response because they're doing this through their textbooks or their notebooks that I've given them they just get the response, duh that's who we're trying to keep out Double underline keep out. <laughs> Up to them to decide what that means. <laughs> Go open the doors. You get a lot of... Sorry, he was in before we got your message. Right. Since we're still invisible, Penelope wants to peek her head around the shelving. And look at this witch hunter. He's still, like, up towards the front, but you can hear a click of his boots on the stone floor. Also, I imagine some people might be were concerned about the witch hunter in different ways because they don't go after most witches. It's very few. It's not like it used to be. So it might not read immediate threat, but Maggie's freaking out. Well, since uh, Jack is not invisible and does not care, he's going to go up and walk around still looking for the book because he doesn't realize which book we're looking for exactly. So he thinks we're still on step one and completely oblivious to the witch hunter and whatever he's doing. Walk around the corner and there's this dude dressed in like a modern equivalent of like traditional old fashioned witch hunter's garb. So like gothic punk? (laughs) Oh, that sounds dope. (laughs) Not originally, but now, yes. And 
he has weird magical things attached to him, and when he sees you, he says, Oh. Didn't know there'd be other people in here. Have you seen anyone that looks like, and then proceeds to basically, not exactly, but pretty closely describe what Maggie looks like? Jack kind of looks at him stupidly and starts to space out and zone out after like the third or fourth word and starts to kind of fall asleep. (laughs) I love that. I'm looking for the child of a rather dangerous witch. You understand that, right? He uh, snaps awake and goes, huh? What? Oh, is it game time? Put me in, coach. I'm ready. I'm ready. He starts jogging in place and jumping up and down. Game time. Let's go. Go. Come on. Move it. Move your ass. Go. 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 <laughs> I love this. Oh, it's so good. He just ignores you. And just... Okay. I hear that and I'm like, ah, conversation. They're very close. I finished my casting. This is the result of my casting. You don't quite understand what he's saying, like what, what the witch hunter is saying, but I'm pretty sure you can hear Jack pretty well, especially with that last part. No, we can hear Jack. I'm reacting to Jack. Oh, yeah, Jack he is just being your, incredibly loud and just hyping himself up. He starts, you know, slapping his chest and trying to get even higher hops. It's like, it's go time, game time. Let's go, go, go. Where's the rest of the team, coach? Wait, hold on. Are you the new assistant coach? He's, like, walked past you at this point. He's ignoring you. One question. How did my casting work out? Am I done casting? Roll plus craft? That'll be a three. You're not entirely sure it worked? Like, there's a possibility it, like, got its attention? But you don't know for sure if it's actually going to come or not. When you look at the map, the dot went from, like, going one direction. Now it's, like, kind of, like, meandering closer, but it doesn't seem in a particular hurry. Eh. I knew it was a failed experiment. I shut it, close the book, shove it back on the shelf, and say, Go this way. And we're gonna try to go around away. As we're hearing Jack, I'm treating that as an alarm. And saying, let's go the other direction. And I'm, like, physically moving people with me. I'm gonna say Maggie's probably, like, used the distraction to kind of, like, try and disappear a bit into the different sections of the archives. Kind of split up, because I think in her mind, you guys likely aren't in danger. Penelope, you probably get, like, got a glimpse of, oh no, I know who's here. I need to get away from them. They're nice, they'll be fine, they'll be better without me here. So you probably are one of the few that realizes that she's just disappeared. Okay. Well, Tara is shooting everybody out. You notice Maggie's not there. I mean, we were nice. We were nice until this dude came for no reason. You were nice to her specifically. Oh, I know. Now she don't see we not nice. I gave her a tea. Most of y'all haven't connected the dots about who she thinks her mom is. And, like, as you're scattering and chewing people out, the witch hunter calls out, I know you're here. I haven't found your mom in Liana yet, but I will find you. Maybe you can help me root the witch out. You're definitely not getting out of here, though. I'm not reacting. I'm still pushing people out. Now that Rania's heard the name, can I roll knowledge to see if I recognize the mother's name now that I've heard it? Yeah. Now that you have any knowledge of what's going on. I mean, I've paid attention to the last, like, two seconds of it. There's a witch hunter after someone, probably, like, the person we're help breaking in. That would be obvious. But also, he's just spewing names at him. I'm like, do, do I care about these names? Do I know any of these people? That's the only name that's been spoken that I'm like, I don't know. what Do I know this name? Four. You do remember kind of the gist of the story. Eliana's a dark witch, bit of a rival to Amity. Don't remember her having a kid? Okay, so I remember like the school presentation version that left out like the kid part, just like evil witch. There's been no version of it that mentions her ever having a kid. She hasn't really been seen a whole lot since the falling out. Oh, okay. 
like she just disappeared into obscurity. Okay. Heard the name, maybe not the same person. Probably someone with a similar name. I mean, with the context, maybe, but not in relation to what's going on. Maybe, but I'll, I, either way, this this dude's looking for a fight, and I'm going to punch him in the face. Or, well, I'm not going to punch him. <laughs> Granny has a cooler fighting style than that. Are you just going to throw <laughs> random potions at him? Oh, it's going to be better than that. It's going to be that, but also with a bit more flair. Because I mentioned the coin on the string earlier. He's actually seen us yet. He's seen Jack. I don't know but. if he's seen anyone else, so I feel like Grania might stand up over some shelves. I imagine you're maybe crouching a little bit. I'm tall. I wouldn't be crouching. <laughs> I would not be crouching. Well, okay. So if the guy has seen Grania, Tara's stopping. Which is why I'm asking, has he seen them? Grania, are you making any attempt to hide yourself? Jack would still be following around like a little puppy, hoping that he'll put him in the game. Not sure what game is going to be played in the middle of the archives, but this guy's just walking around continuing to talk about how, like, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Liana was born to dark magic and she fell. Like, he's just... Trying to prevent the next tragedy and all about how, oh, she almost killed a bunch of innocent people. Granny is not going to listen to any of this. Penelope, do you still have your mind thing open? Yes. You're getting a lot of anger at this, because, like, I want to prove it wrong, but there is a little bit there of what if he's right. But there's also, like, a lot of, I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm not going to be like that. And we can't see Maggie because she went off without us, right? Yeah. She split off in another direction, but I imagine you can kind of like get a general sense for where she is, maybe? General mind direction. Possibly. Like stereo? Should we? And she's whispering real quietly. Should, should we? Should we punch him? Can we do that? Can Lucy hear what he's saying? Is he being loud? He's being loud, right? Oh. What? Everyone can hear it. Everyone can hear it. As soon as she hears that, she freezes. Tara will follow suit and will speak in an out loud voice to Grania. Hey, we can drop this invisibility anytime we want, right? Sure, yeah. Eh, Yeah, go for it. As she does, she's actually going to start walking towards the witch hunter. She's going to reach down to a pencil case that she carries on the kind of belty thing that they wear. And you would expect, like, a wand or something fancy like that. No. She pulls out this long, midnight blue feather quill, opens up her book, which is just floating in front of her hand, flips it open to the page that shows everybody in the room, and sees his name. And then she's going to mark it out and see if that does anything to him. She's going to attack him. Roll plus craft? (laughs) Yeah. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> Four. That dice is going to jail. You see some sort of magical effect around him, but he's got, like, these different sort of, like, magical items around him. One of them just kind of flares bright and casts the spell off. Little girl, I recommend getting out of here. This is grown-up business. <laughs> She's gonna laugh, and her voice is not gonna sound quite so young. I think I'm going to follow one of the fun lines that I had for, for Tara. Oh. Oh, I was waiting for you to say something. Oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll see the rest of it. Uh, she's going to continue writing her book, and she's going to flip over to the communications page and say, Oi, get the door to this bit, this room unlocked. Working on it? Some weird wording going on here? <sighs> then break the wards. Working on it? She's the one being impatient to them. <laughs> I've spent enough goodwill to be impatient in this moment. Working on it, this only goes so fast. Having to get creative with ingredients here. Also, someone go find the headmaster. Someone who hasn't responded to anything in a while is like, on it. You're guessing they're probably like not near by enough to be able to help. Are you that West's kid? Hmm? He looks at you and says, you look familiar. You can be problematic, too. I'm always problematic. 
how is everyone sort of just reacting to this? And I'm just going to say invisibility probably is fading for everyone. Soraya will hide behind a bookcase then out of the witch hunter's sight. And she'll start to write something in her journal. Try something else not directly involving him as she did see what happened with Tara. Affecting him directly. So she's going to try to do that. Maybe shift the terrain or something around him. What is she writing specifically? Do you have an idea of something she wants to try? There are lots of things they could like fall on him or something. Yeah, but she also doesn't want to hurt the books. Question. Is he by an area that we know is warded? There's probably something nearby enough. What kind of ward is it? Would it trigger a physical response, like, force him in a certain direction? There are some things that are warded, like a force field around it. Okay. Because it's like the some of the more sensitive things. There's, there's probably like one of those nearby where like that ward is up. And so like if it bumped into you, it would at least stagger him a little bit. Mm-hmm. And there might also be other ways, because if you roll high enough, you probably get something very weird to happen. Yeah, but I have to figure out what that weird thing is. Yeah. Do you want to kind of come back to what you've written in a little in a bit? Yeah. So you can yeah, let's see what everyone else it. is so doing real quick. Yeah. You're hidden behind a bookshelf, writing on something. Tara's being t- scary. Ronnie, what are you doing? Ronnie would be throwing up a potion in their direction and hitting it with her like coin on a string break it so it would splatter all over the ground in front of them and it's like a, a sticky substance to try to slow him down as he would continue walking trying to just ignore it because he doesn't think nothing of us but just wait till he loses his shoes <laughs> yeah Roll oh, plus craft. It. Home Alone style. I did I did have the momentary picture of Grania standing behind Terra as Terra like flips open the book and does all this magic stuff, and you just have this looming plague doctor like holding some potions right behind it and just <laughs> tosses it. Four. Three plus one. Oh, I guess plus one for my potion, right? I was wondering, since he was throwing it into the air, and I'm all hyped up on sports, if I could try to hit it with my shooter stick right at the Witch Hunter. Roll plus vigor? I rolled a five. My vigor is three, so eight. It works. He seems a little shocked that you were able to do that. You made Cowboy Man sticky? Brief moment of, okay, this kid's got fast reflexes, and it's not going to slow him down as as much as you probably wanted it to, but it does kind of slow him down a bit, because the ground is sticky, but it's not, like, going to straight up take his shoe off, but walking has gotten harder, and he's starting to look a little miffed. Yeah, it's a little gunky. It's like, oh, Did you not use enough sugar, or what? Everybody scatter. <laughs> Gradia doesn't scatter. Gradia prepares the fight. Gradia is a delinquent. Penelope is looking for Maggie. Lucy is having a panic attack. Curled up on the ground, panic attack? No. Frozen in place, hyperventilating a little bit, a panic attack. Oh, do you need a snack? Gradia has any snack you need. Okay, well, Penelope was going to go look for Maggie, but seeing Lucy in mid-panic attack, she tries to focus her and ground her and get her to move. How do you do that? Popularity roll. Popularity? Yeah, roll plus popularity. It's That's kind of your, like, influence over people. Yeah. Seven? Lucy's not entirely there. With a seven, you are able to kind of get through to her. Lucy, are you going to go with it? I was asking, how is she doing it? 
Oh, how? Okay, I'm sorry, I missed that part. So I would be putting myself between you and the direction that the witch hunter's coming from and just be like, hey, Lucy, we're together and he's he's not he's not going to get to you. We need to move. Are you okay? What do you need? Don't. 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 I can't. I can't. It's just dead air. I am having trouble coming up with what I want to say. We can switch back to the witch hunter for a second. Yeah. Um, Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Tara is going to continue, if she may. Okay. She is welcome to. She will go. My name is Tara West. If you're coming here for someone who does who practices evil magics, then you've found them. Now, we can either make this a very messy affair, or you can start leaving the room. I'll follow. Never thought I'd have someone a bit so quickly. But it just goes to prove what my mentor taught me or his great work was ended. That the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But you're not the one I'm here for. I'm here for the daughter of the one who killed my mentor. That witch Ileana. Hmm. A fanciful name. Thought she could hide her kid here. Probably wants to undo the work of her friend, Amity. But we can't allow that. Not even sure why they allowed women to learn magic. Witchcraft does no one good. As he's kind of monologuing his way through, I do have the page on my book open to my GPS tracker on uh, the bobcat that I successfully reanimated at some point, and that ran away from me. Is it on its way? It's coming. Slowly, but it's... It's starting to realize that, oh, oh, that was her. And then it sees, like, open windows and doors, because I'm guessing you... Yes, I told them all to open the windows and doors that allow its access to the library, and the ushering them to unlock the door as fast as possible is so that they don't have to deal with the bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> it's on its way! It's in the school, it's approaching cautiously, it's not, like, bounding towards you, but it's on its way, the door wards are starting to come off, it turns out he put a couple on there, and you do get a mention of headmaster's on her way, and with a guest? Question mark. Seems reasonable. ETA on both inbound groups? Who's gonna arrive first? You know the headmaster's going to be coming pretty quickly, because concerning issue, I don't know how much has been communicated, but like, she's concerned. Mm -hmm. You're not sure exactly how cautious the bobcats being. It's usually a little more hesitant in public places, but it also, the last time you saw it, you, like, smacked it with a shovel or something. Something like that. <laughs> then I'm gonna try and trying to make the bobcat go faster so it gets here before the principal. Okay, well, give me a roll. I'm gonna use popularity. It starts to pick up speed, and you get a couple of warnings of there's a weird-looking bobcat coming your way? <laughs> it wasn't my finest work, but It'll do. How's everyone reacting to what Tara just said out loud? I have a thought. So Penelope mm -hmm. reached me and then I heard Tara do that. I'm going to push past Penelope and run out to the witch hunter and I'm going to try and use suggestion and I'm going to go, tell me why you're here. The truth. Okay. Roll plus craft, but I don't know if you'll get any bonuses because you're not, like, mm -mm. using your nail polish unless you're, like, throwing a vial at him. I am not doing that, no. Yeah, so it's just gonna be a straight craft. Two plus three is five. There's, like, he takes a second and says, I had a feeling that if I track down the monster's daughter, the monster would come to find her. I've been hunting quite a few for some time now. You're one of them, aren't you? What? We have quite the cabal. You look familiar. Was it your parents that practiced? What does it matter to you? I've never done anything wrong. 
Neither did Minnie. And then one day they did. Eliana was helping, or supposedly, Amity solve the mystery of girls who were going missing when really, the whole time, she was kidnapping them to form a coven. My mentor tried to stop them, but he didn't succeed, and the whole world knows what Ileana did to him that day. You can't escape what you're born to. Hey, so breaking the fourth wall moment, I really want the bobcat to interrupt him in the middle of his speech. <laughs> just like really badly. <laughs> Doesn't have to damage him. I just need it to interrupt him. <laughs> so you're just gonna kill innocent people on the off chance that they might do something bad? Before Lucy says anything, they're just loud like crash on the door and everyone's just like it's like words are gone couldn't get the door open now there's a bobcat tara what's going on i'm fixing y'all's mistake <laughs> there's like we're sorry and then there's another loud like crash and like crack and splintering of the door and y'all hear this they have no idea what's going on ah oh, just on time and in response to what Lucy said, I never planned to kill anyone. That's that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to take you all in to make sure you never hurt anyone. Close enough. Get him Snuffles. <laughs> you named him Snuffles? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yep. You hear the door like finally like break and shatter and there's a pattering of feet and you also get an update. Headmistress is here. Along with her friend, she looks weirdly familiar, and you do hear the sound of the headmistress, like, and, or you hear a voice like, What's going on? Who's in here? Don't worry, headmistress, I've got this under control. Found the daughter of the witch you've been biting all this time. She snuck her way into the school. And then you finally hear Maggie, No, I didn't! Just something comes out of nowhere, like, smacks him in the head, and... Even though the invisibility is worn off. You can't see her. Cool skill. I don't care what you think she did. Whether it's true or not, that's not me, and you're going to leave. Another thing just tucks at his head. Where is the bobcat? Can I have the bobcat just, like, grab onto his ankle and start pulling him down to the floor? To get really stuck into that, all that glue that's there. I think the bobcat's just gonna, like, straight up launch himself at him. Flattens him face first into the goo. And, like, did you specifically summon it to attack him, or did you just say, come here, kitty kitty? I said, come here, kitty kitty, the first time. The second time was a redirect. Because the first time I didn't have a target. Okay. So, what does this bobcat look like? Ooh, okay. It's very problematic. (laughs) It has a normal base body. But... You can definitely see where it was shot by a hunter, and where that part of its body that got blown off was replaced, with not exactly clear. A fur of some kind, not necessarily cat-related. This was a quick patch job, well, more of like a novice's attempt at fixing a very bad taxidermy. Its face, it doesn't quite line up quite right, doesn't necessarily have eyes, the eyes aren't quite... If you look at it square on, it's like a little bit droopy. It's a mess. It would be horrifying to see in the dark. He just got attacked with crappy taxidermy. Yep, really bad taxidermy. That's the, the best description for what this thing looked like. That's and I think exactly one person in the room has any idea what this cat is. <laughs> oh yeah. I think I have informed the headmistress of this, because it, it, it's a threat. That kind of always chases me. In the party, then. Yeah. yeah. Wait, no. Whoever knows my secret knows about it. Like I said, exactly one person in the party. He just had crappy da- taxidermy bobcat that probably smells a little funny. Face plant him into the mysterious goo. And now it's just like staying on top of him. It's like swearing and muggering in protest. It's like staring directly at Tara. Hi. Yes, I did make you. Thank you for doing your job. Kind of like it wants to get Tara next. She is holding her ground, because that is what you need to do. 
Or at least that's what she thinks she needs to do. She'll start slowly casting the uh, send away spell. What's everyone else doing? I think at that point, Serana, who had writer's block for a hot minute, very unfortunate, quickly writes down that there are two books sort of on either side, now sort of halfway on the shelf, maybe a little bit less, depending on how high the shelves are, where the force field wards trigger at the same time. So basically makes these two force field bubbles that traps the witch hunter and the bobcat, because now the bobcat's the thing she has to be worried about in place, hopefully. Roll plus craft. Oh, and Tara is going to scurry around behind Grania, because she's way shorter than Grania. <laughs> Grania is a wonderful shield. I guess while this is going down, Jack is running around the outskirts of the archive room going, Go! <laughs> oh, I love Jack. He's such a precious bean. So precious. Good shot with that. Lucy has slid to the floor. Her legs gave out. Also, Bobcat's not going away now that it is trapped in bubble. This is perfectly fine. She's she's being very meticulous about it. She's probably only like a third of the way through writing down the sigil needed to cast it. She's purposefully slowing down to cast it to the right moment. Yeah. And what's everyone else doing? How's everyone else reacting? Penelope is like fists up now that Lucy's hit the ground. She looks down. She's like, do you need a minute? Do you need? And she's like fists up at the witch hunter like, Putting herself in it. Do you, do you need? Do you, do you just need a minute? He's basically been slammed face first down into blue, and he's in a force field bubble. Oh yeah, no, I'm just I'm just body blocked so that Lucy can have her her moment to regather as she is, you know, done a very brave thing. But now mm-hmm. I'm I'm body blocking and comes out of that bubble. I'm gonna punch him in the face. I got hurt a lot, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, it's not, it's, yeah, nope, it's not gonna hurt a lot, but I, I, I'll do it. Ronnie, what are you doing? Just prepping for, like, in, in case they break out, to hit him, punch him, react in some way. He's gonna have a hard time with a big bobcat on him, but, like, that's probably a good call. Like, you hear a, kind of like a thump of two feet hitting the floor, and they come towards you. You still don't see anything, and you hear, like, a click, click of... Crystals being, like, struck together, and Maggie kind of rejoins you, and she's like, thank you guys for sticking up for me. I'm I'm so sorry. I did not expect any of that to happen. Is everyone okay? I made a three-door inner. A three-door inner. Goal! Starts running the other direction backwards. Goal! She just kind of just like, okay, I'm assuming that's a yes from him. Are you all okay? I... For now. Oh, I had mistress. Where are you? We're back here. Lucy reaches out and she grabs Penelope's pants or leggings or whatever, or her leg or just whatever, and goes, I knew when I picked out the red polish, today was going to be a bad day. We can go shopping and get different different red polish. Maybe that bottle just needs to retire. <laughs> and she just leans against her leg. I think Maggie's gonna kind of look over you, Lucy, like, are you alright? You seem particularly riled by what he said. Your parents, too? She's saying this quietly. And so maybe, like, crouch down. <sighs> Sure. Let's go with that. It's like your friend said. You don't have to be like that. And you're not alone in having a parent who did that. Apparently, my mom killed someone. It's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. She just kind of like reaches out a hand. Please don't touch me. Carefully pulls the hands back. It's okay. Not everyone's a touchy. I'm not either. And she just looks over at Tara. So you're a necromancer? Dad was. I'm not. That was a mistake. 
That was me trying to copy dear old Poppy. It's a problem that it's around now. She, like, goes over to the bubble and is just looking at it. Because she's fairly confident about the bubble, and she's like, I wish I had a solution for getting rid of it, but I guess it came in useful? Turns back and, like, looks back. Was that... Did that help everybody? Was that... that was, is, is that okay? Ronnie has a thumbs up. <laughs> it's like kneading on the dude's back and like flexing the claws you can see it like scratching like it has like it's not actually doing damage to him but he's he's upset what's it gonna do once it gets out of the bubble you know good question i don't have an answer for what it does or what it wants to do i just know that i don't want it anywhere near me and she finishes the casting of the like get away from me spell hopefully it tries to leave i have no idea Give me a roll. Let's see. Sure. This one's probably just going to be plus craft. Sure. I'll give that a four. It doesn't run, but it walks to the other side of the bubble. And then, like, when it realizes it can't go there, it just kind of sits and looks back at you. She's just going to stare at it. Force field has to go down first. And at this point, the moment you hear, like, the telltale click-clack of the headmistress's heels on the floor and there's like another set like sounds more like boots than high heel shoes like following after and she's like what's going on here is everyone all right and you see head mr samity kind of running around the corner we are he's not what happened to you dudes wait i think i recognize that one another woman kind of like comes to like stop to stand behind her and there's something familiar about her, though. You know you've never seen her in particular before. Does she look like Maggie? When the uh, headmistress comes around the corner, Jack, I guess, would notice her and stop celebrating mm-hmm. like almost immediately and snap to attention and be like, uh, uh, I'm not goofing off, I swear. No. Oh, what are you doing back here? What's everyone else doing back here? And why is... What's going on? So I won't make you all, like, fully re-explain, but who is going to be the one to explain? Probably me. <laughs> if I'm in front. We were asked nicely to answer a question. We came in here to try to find the answer to the question. We think we found the answer to the question. Then this guy showed up saying that he wanted to take one of us away. Which is, like, real, real big no-no. So, I call in backup. Everybody exercises the skills that they've learned at this school to the fullest of their ability. And then you shut up. Yeah, and he started threatening some of us. Oh yeah, he was being a very threatening piece of redacted. <laughs> yeah. And you said that you didn't know he was here? No, I had no idea he was at the school. We have sometimes invited former hunters in the past to, talk, to bring in to speak on different subjects, but... This one wasn't invited, but I do. And she just kind of like turns to her friend. It's... Doesn't he look like the apprentice? Yes, he rather does. At one point, he said something about his mentor being killed by Ileana. At one point during his sort of rant. Is Ileana the actual right name? Sorry. Yes, that is it. (laughs) Okay, cool. I just got scared. So two women are just kind of sure, looking like, Yes, I do believe that explains some things. So, who was the one who was looking for answers? I'll just kind of look up and be like, Um, um, which one of you was it? Very poorly trying to hide that she is fully aware of who it was, but she wants them to speak up first. There's a couple of seconds before Maggie steps forward and she's like, it was me. I've been trying to figure out who my birth parents are and why my magic is different and I piece some things together and figured out the last bits would be in here. And I discovered you know who my mom is. Why didn't you say anything? And Amity responds to that, because we knew there might be some people who could still prove problematic for her situation, so we decided it was better to 
keep things under wraps until we figure out who that problematic person is, and apparently looks to the man who is glued to the floor, being trapped by- well, no longer being trapped by the bobcat, but he is, like, attempting to peel himself up, but he was pressed into the glue for a while, so, um, it's proving a little stickier than he thought it would be, because it's hardened, his clothes are stuck to it. Yeah, it gets, it gets real cementy. Yes. But I guess there's still going to be some things we need to clear up, but you all know the story of the witch who was supposedly trying to start a coven, yes? As I think at one point you all have remembered at least parts of. Or at least the gist of it. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing everyone nods or gives some sort of assent. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I was investigating that along with my friend Ileana. We practiced magic in secret back then, but there was a witch hunter who showed up and we eventually found out he was of the same belief as this one, pointing to person who was like, he's got like one arm free and he's still ranting and raving, but the force field's actually like keeping all of the sound in so no one can hear him. Except for the bobcat. I have a feeling the bobcat is getting bothered. <laughs> the bobcat's kind of looking at him like you're annoying, you should be lunch. <laughs> Though I don't know if undead bobcats digest things. She's currently ignoring the thing in the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it at the time. Well, I did know part of it. My friend Leon was adopted. And we found out the night of that fight that her parents had been Practitioners of dark magic. They were arrested, she was put into foster care, eventually adopted, and that's how we met. This witch hunter had somehow tracked her down, was convinced that she would end up just like them, so when after watching her for a while and realizing that wasn't happening, he decided to get preemptive and frame her. We found out that Things got tense. He tried to use something that he didn't really know how to use, and it backfired. And there wasn't anything we could do to stop that. So, it was hard, but we eventually decided it might be best if Eliana went into hiding for a while until we could find a way to make it safer for children whose parents have turned to the dark magics, because it's not hereditary like some people believe. It's a choice and takes a long time to get to the point where there's no return. So she disappeared. And when she had a daughter, I helped hide her. I was going to tell you at some point, Maggie, that's actually why I wanted to speak with you on Monday. I know... Your foster parents have been having some money issues recently. So, I called in your mother to help work that out. We figured by now, anyone interested in pursuing her would be gone. Apparently not, but apparently is no longer something to worry about. Tara will talk about the bobcat later. Tara just gives her a thumbs up. (laughs) Yeah. But don't worry, none of you are in trouble. I would like all of you to meet Eliana. And she gestures to the woman next to her, who has not taken her eyes off of Maggie this entire time. She is not a practitioner of dark magic in any way, and I think she's about ready to come out of hiding. How's everyone reacting to this? Are there any drinks left in the thing, or did I... You had to take everything. Oh, I have everything, but if you need a drink, Grania has you covered. As all this was being explained, Terra probably just backed off towards the side and is leaning against one of the bookshelves, taking notes furiously, managing all of the mismanagement that she has had over the past few hours. <laughs> being like, sorry, I was impatient, all of this stuff. And like is listening and is like, oh. But she's also doing the like, this isn't my business, so I need to back off. But also probably a bit of, okay, this does explain things. Yes. 
Jack is currently drawing the play from the game earlier into his playbook, which is also the notebook that he- That Tara has connected. Page flashes, I see that you're writing that, and I'm like, nice, I like it. And you'll just get the words, I like it, written down in one of the corners. Probably got a lot of random little notes that just kind of pop up in your notebook. Penelope, who had just been standing there like, hands up fisticuffs, watch this happen, and wasn't even trying to act like, oh, you know, I'm not, no, she's in, she's just following like, her head starting back and forth, everybody's talking, and towards the end of the conversation, she just goes, Oh! Oh! It's a reunion! Making it totally embarrassing. Maggie and Ileana are just hugging right now. Lucy smacks her on the leg. Ah! Serana, how are you reacting to all of this? She's surprised. She blinks for a minute and then sort of goes, Headmistress, as a bit of an aside, she doesn't necessarily want it to be very loud, but Mistress, does this mean that you're going to make sure that uh, the teachers here don't show Ileana in a negative light? I know in like some of our history that has sort of been the case where she has been seen to be evil and if she's coming out shouldn't that be changed to be honest most of the stories were the professor's own biases i tried to curve that where i could but it was it was a tricky situation but to be fair most of the things that people attribute to iliana she didn't actually do there were other people, and a lot of the times when we quote-unquote fought, she was helping me deal with certain situations. Like, helping me t- sometimes where people would just lose control of their magic, and it wasn't something I could handle, but she has better ability and influence over certain areas of magic that I did. So we've actually been working together for some time. And we've been talking about how we're going to handle this for some time. We, we have plans in place. I just understand when a person knows your family, it can get a bit complicated. And in her, in Maggie's case, I don't want any potential backlash on her because people were given the wrong information. Oh, yeah, no, we'll try and keep that part on the down low until things smooth over with Ileana being not evil. But uh, don't worry, we have plans in place and I'll let the two of them decide when they will bring that fact to light. We all know how family names can weigh heavy, but that doesn't mean you can't do something different. True that. How you doing, Lucy? I am still on the floor. Are you feeling better? She mostly just looks tired. That's fair. Well, you all handle that rather admirably. I do believe those two, pointing to Ileana and Maggie, have kind of like pulled off to the side, have some catching up to do, but... I'll take care of things here if you would all like to maybe go out and celebrate a bit. It's not often students get to test their skills in such a situation. And I'll add the appropriate notes to your test results. And we can, of course, talk more in the morning. But you all look like you could use the chance to rest and relax. Appreciate it. Smoothies? Smoothies. We should go for smoothies. Hey, are y'all cool with having, like, ten people join us? I have a lot of people I need to apologize to. I mean, is that it? <laughs> that feels like a small number. I well, mean, can well. we bring the team, too? Why not? We'll just buy out the smoothie shop? I'm good with it. All right, let's go do that.
Basic Witches is a game of teen femmes casting spells with pumpkin spice lattes and making sigils with liquid lipstick to hex high school sexual predators and ace exams, created by Alicia Furnace Productions. If you are interested in learning more about the game, we have included a link to the game in our show notes. The cast for Next Gen Witches includes Alexis as Serona, Victor as Tara, Casey as Lucy, and special guest Xander from Heartbeats as Grania, Nicola the Druid as Penelope, and Mark from Odinson Media as Jack. If you're interested in learning more about Pseudonym Social and the shows that we produce, you can check out our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. We also have a contact form. If you are ever interested in joining one of our future one-shots, feel free to reach out and we'll see what we can do. Uh, We were actually, uh, me and my friend here. It points to a cat. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, your friend's with a cat. Yes, he's he's one of those uh, Dreamlands cats. So uh, he's more than a cat. Yes, and he is very lucky to consider myself his friend. What did he say? He said that I was lucky to consider myself his friend. Oh, okay. I I do feel that way. Okay. Uh, I don't have too many friends. You really aren't that bright, are you? No. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, it's me, Adam, the DM over at Microphones and Monsters. You just got done listening to a short clip from our show. Microphones and Monsters is a Cthulhu Mythos 5th Edition actual play podcast. We ask you to join us every week, Monday and Friday. You can find us on your favorite podcatcher, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can find all of our links at microphonesandmonsters.com.